Uh oh. Big warm welcome to everybody. This is Hukulo TV from www.humancolony.org. One day I'll get that one right. Today is the 21st of March 2015, and we're all very excited to be here. We have some beautiful new members who have joined us today, and some of our lovely old members who have congregated to be part of our amazing webinars that we put on every week through the YouTube and the Google Plus portal. Um, I'd like to introduce Jim, our main channel today. And we got some exciting news because we just found out that we will have Rob Gauthier coming and channeling on May the 16th uh, with the Human Colony Group. So that's one for your diaries to take note of. And also there's an amazing event coming up. In, it's called Close Encounters of the Eighth Kind. And that's on June the 20th. And that would be a pay-per-view event. Um, including Jim, who will be channeling Akesh, I believe Rob, who will be channeling Treb, and is there one other person? Yeah. Krista Riza will be doing the Orion Council. Ah, okay. Krista, I haven't listened to Krista Riza. And I think um, Rob Gothier is going to do Ardiff. Oh, thanks. Ardiff, yes. Ardiff. So it should be really amazing. It should be fun. Fabulous stuff. And then, and it's very reasonable. So yeah, it's only thirty dollars for four hours. Yes, yes, it's only thirty dollars for four hours. So it's not bad at all. So it's for four hours. That's pretty good. <laughs> yes, so, and it gives Carousel. everybody a chance to support Jim in a different venue. So. Yeah, it should be it should be fun. I've never done one of these kind of events before, but I'm really looking forward to it. So it looks like a lot of fun. So yes. uh, first of many we hope. Yeah. So we also so anyway. have a few new members here. Um that have joined the group. So Adriana, Thomas, and Martin. I don't know. <laughs> JD. JD. Oh, JD. Okay. Um, welcome all. And of course, our old members. <laughs> Not old in terms of age. <laughs> <laughs> and Sabrina, I have some uh, a new member, a new person here today, and I have yes. some. I have four people here at the house. We have Barbara. Hi there. And Helga's new. This is her first time. Hello. And we Sandy. Don't see you. Uh, say hello. Hello. There so, we go. She doesn't. She doesn't want to be on YouTube though. So. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. Now you're on. And then we have Will, of course, uh, and Sandy and Will. So it's uh, really nice to feel their energy here today. So it's great. Well, welcome everybody that's sitting with Jim over there in person. And. Uh, Feel free to ask questions also. Oh, very good. Yes. And let's see who we get today. Is there any requests? You said some humans from where? Uh, Tau Seti. I request humans from Tau Seti to talk, come through. Tau Seti. Go ahead. Juliano from the Athena, the starship. Juliana from the Athena Starship. Okay. Um, maybe we could um, get um, a member from the different um, ET organizations that are doing site to site. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, there are other. There. Just to let you know, there are other. Uh, species that are doing site to site without permission, and some of you, some people on Ukolo have gone with them. But uh, Ken Jean's site to site has stopped because it was getting Kirk near in trouble. So they have another meeting in April about the site to site. So hopefully that will soon get cleared up. But they're pretty adamant about taking people away from the Earth. They don't like that at all. So. Well, we're going to work on that, though, and if you have any suggestions, they ask. If you have suggestions, to let them know, 
because uh, they have a lot of ideas, but so far nothing seems to be the thing that would break it, break that tr trust barrier. So if you have ideas, send them to me. Send them to me. So, yes, Truman, um, it also might be good if we did a webinar and everybody stated why they think it's a good idea. That's a, that's a great idea. We could do that as well. We could have a, a, a special uh, hangout or a webinar for that. Yes. That would be cool. That would be very cool. So, uh, all right. Anybody else? Um, you know, it would be nice. Why not? Uh, the Syrians that uh, I don't know what civilization is that that have helped me. It would be nice to talk to one of them. Okay, the Syrians. The, yes, I've already spoken. I have a Syrian lady that speaks to me every now and then, named Sentia. Sentia okay. speaks to me every now and then, and she d nice. gives me information from the Syrian area. So. She's very, very soft and very, very light. So. Yes, and of course, an Arcturian is always welcome. Oh. <laughs> and Lakesh. All right. And Takar. And Lakesh, of course, yes. All righty then. Um, let's see who comes through. I'll see you in a little bit. I uh, think positive thoughts and send me positive energy so that we all have uh, all that we're all connected. It's always best when we're all connected through the spirit, and we are anyway. But if you're if yes. you do it consciously, it's even stronger. So um, Brian said, Grindle. Grindle <laughs> is hi, Brian. How are you? <laughs> Good. Of course, I, I, miss, I miss him. <laughs> yeah, actually, I've grown, I've grown is, so fond of him. <laughs> actually, Grindle is always around me because he's a yes. protector kind of spirit. Oh, wow. um, or, or not a, I should say tr re, uh, protector kind of entity because he uh, protects from the dark and he likes he likes uh, human colony and right, he's right. very active now. He jumps into a lot of private sessions without being asked. For. I was just um, going to say that, Jim. He came through in my last one with you, and I was absolutely delighted. I'm so pleased he's still doing it. it but he's, but he he knows the people that really like him and stuff. So he'll jump in front of somebody during a session and say, <laughs> "I'm here," you know. So uh, and they'll be going, "Oh, hi, hi, hi." They're really happy to see him. However, he doesn't do that with everybody, but uh, right. he does do that with some of his friends. So, Grindel is always around. So he's a pushy monkey, I guess. <laughs> yes. Alrighty then. All right, I'll see you in a little bit. <clears throat> and what is the name of that? I say the name of that place again. Humans from Tau Seti. T Tau Seti. Tau is the number T in Greek. Yeah, T A space C I C E T I Tau Seti. Wow, because I I'm trying to say that to them so that mm -hmm. I can maybe get somebody from there. Humans from Tau Seti. Okay, <laughs> it wasn't coming through in my brain right right because it, it was like rural. So uh, alrighty then. I'll see you later and have a good time.
Ooh, Yes. Hmm. <coughs> 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 Ah, I am Sentia. Hello, Sentia. From the Syrian species, as you would call us. We are from a place far away. However, I have come to give you some news about this changing season. There is new energy for the Earth at this time. It appears that you have been given new energy through the different artifacts left by different species on your planet, such as the pyramids and the Stonehenge. And the different things are now emitting a new kind of energy throughout your world. It is going to be a new energy of change and awakening for those that come near to those objects. They will not be the same after they leave, but they may not understand it at first. But it is going to be a wonderful thing because the ascension is happening in a new phase with the new phases of the sun, stars, and planets. So this energy will be almost seemingly primitive. Let me explain that. The primitive energy, not that it is negative, but basic and it will cause you to be grounded in a better way. It will also excite many of you in some ways, perhaps even sexually. But do not worry about that. It is come so that those who are active in the fourth dimension can ground even better and move up through that dimension of third into the fourth and bring more energy and information to yourself. This is a personal time. This is not a time for that energy to be spoken of or shared with necessarily. That is not necessarily the reason for it. But it is an energy that will ground you and make you happier in your third dimensional space. Bring an energy to the third dimensional outlook with a fourth dimensional view. Do you understand? Yes. This is a great time because the spring is a special time for many of the creatures of the universe, the species, the spirits. And therefore, this is why it is aligned at this time that this energy should come forth. There are also smaller landmarks and things left behind by other species that will be activated. Machu Picchu, places of great power, will also be giving this grounding special energy to people who are there. Not even, not only to those with fourth dimensional activations, but also to those who are just curious and are ready to 
start a kind of awakening within themselves. They will find their stimulated thought patterns and stimulated body systems to be interested in what is happening there. And most people that visit these particular landmarks are those who are interested in the extraterrestrial. Interested in the magic that they hold. Interested in the energy that is not from the Earth entirely. Do you understand? And so therefore, those people that go to these many landmarks around your world will be feeling and sensing a new vibration and a new awakening. And as some have said earlier, yes, this will help the ascension to move forward. Their negativity will be grounded and it will be their positivity will also be grounded. And so they will be able to share more of who they are in the third dimension pulled through to the fourth. Of course, some of them are not aware of the fourth dimension yet. But it will be a time of exploration for the human within. This is a great time because this needs to happen with the human race. The human within must be examined. The human within must be purified. And you can purify in many ways. And this will help you to see the shadow energies. It will give you the freedom to understand that right and wrong exist together. And it is a perception that some things are wrong when they are right and some things are right when they are wrong. But you must understand the vibration that goes out from these things, that is what is important. What comes out from you. If what comes out from you is negative, then that must be changed. If what comes out from you is positive, then that must be purified. Do you understand? And many of you understand. I wish I could speak it in a more understandable way. But I think that you understand now that there's a great purification coming from within for many of you. I believe all the talk speaks to Kim about this internal purification. Yes, Jim. My most recent channel is with regard to this exact subject. I will be making it public tomorrow. Thank you so much. And I'm, I apologize, I didn't use the correct name, but it's lovely to have you with us. Thank you. Names are not important at this point. Because who I am is for you. I am a servant. And you call me what you will. And I love that you give me a name. Speak to me as you will, and my name for you may be different as well. It might be a purer name for you, but you should not worry about what you are called, but why you are called. Yes. Interesting. So what's the best way for us to, in practical terms, to, to implement what you were speaking of? I would say 
to find one of these artifacts and go to it. But there are many, even in the United States where you live, there are many artifacts of different species. There are places such as Arizona, which has many, many vortexes that were left there by species before you. I cannot locate one at the moment because I am so far from you, but I know of them. In, in terms of uh, purifying ourselves. Yes, there are ways to purify the self. They have, you have been given many ways, actually, through Shell and others to purify yourself from what they call shadow energies. Review those and you will have an idea of what those things within you are that need to come out. But right now I must go. The message was that there is a new energy here on Earth. Of course, you do not have to go to these particular landmarks to feel the result of them because it will be apparent that they come, that there is something emitting from them from long distances. But it will be very strong close by them. I bid you a good day. Thank you for coming. Ah, Thank before you so I go, much for is, is there any more questions before I go? Uh, I'd like to ask about the relevance of the recent, well, yesterday's total eclipse also being a full uh, new moon. How does yes. this relate to your message? The equinox is of great power and significance. It brings a sign, if you will, of the energy that has been released. The alignment is purposeful and is a message to all species in your solar system. Not only to those on Earth, but the alignment goes far beyond an eclipse. There's an energy that happens with an eclipse that does not happen any other time. And the reason for that is because so many are focused on it. There's so much focus that it can communicate easily with your people when you are focusing on it. And that energy was released to you from it and to the landmarks and throughout the solar system in one great burst. There was a central spot for that which was Stonehenge. Stonehenge being the oldest of the relics that have great energy on your world and so therefore the pyramids and Stonehenge had the greatest power emittance at this time. And there, when you see, if you were at Stonehenge at the moment of the eclipse, there would have been a very big emotional emittance among the crowd. they would have felt it deeply. Thank you. Sabrina? I... Uh, if there's no other words, then I shall go. 
So uh, the only thing I was going to ask is, did, did this start already, or is there a yes. particular time? Okay. It started with the eclipse. I'm glad you mentioned it. It came at a perfect time for the release of this energy on the solstice. A sign of change and a sign of new energy. All together, which does not happen often, as you know. <laughs> it is already affecting many people. And the energy in this room has been amplified just with the knowledge of it. Yes. Good day. Good day. Thank you for coming. Namaste. Soak in the energy. Soak it in. Let it fall on you. Let it soak in through you. I am Juliana. Welcome. I heard someone call me. So I have come to answer questions. I really do not have a message except to say that I love this energy. Do you have questions for me? Starship. I am from the starship. It does not matter where I'm from, really. But I am from a starship. Are you the same as Giuliano? Yes. Yes. Did you have a question? Um, requested. It is not important who I am, really. What is the question? Yes. Who was for her to come? Are you around the Earth? Yes. Is this the mothership that you're on? Yes. The captain? I am, yes, and but there is others with me. But I, but I do take a leadership ability there, yes. And I do like to um, bring others into leadership training. Mm -hmm. And it is a lovely thing to be uh, with these people. I know that this is a different form for me. A different, it's a different atmosphere for me. You're Arturian? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. And your role on the uh, mothership is the whole mothership, the whole starship. I need. I have many roles, and I do many things. And I feel that my greatest role is to bring stabilization to all different things, mm -hmm. and I bring uh, understanding where there is none, and I bring leadership where there is chaos. So I I take apart the elements and put them back together. Can you speak some of your language, please? Yes. Do rato ha ha ti 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 ha ti 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 Ah, kiki boa, chata, ratatapa, pora, totu, sititititia, kati. 
nakia kalio kota na nakia kota 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 kosa kalio na katia ko kia la kata niyo kata kaka kokoro to furu toro kita kario kato le kia kota to kia ti kia la kota na kia we are speaking about the fun things of the energy because there is a lightness in our words. The way that we speak has, we speak intention first before we speak what the message is. So therefore we cannot be misunderstood because our intention is spoken first. To say that what she said was, my intention is to greet you. So that I could not misunderstand when she said hello or whatever mm -hmm. in the tone of voice, whatever she would say, I understood it was a greeting. So what I said to her was my intention is to tell you that I enjoy how you speak the language. And therefore, we had a small conversation, very light, but very friendly with intention, with intention. What is it that you've learned about me? Um, well, I believe there's a connection. Yes. <laughs> so you recognize it? Yes, I did. I don't think you coming into a human body is very normal. Not as, no, it isn't. I don't you ever have, probably. Um, I have. Oh, you have. I have, but it is not something I do normally. But I wanted to come today because there is an energy here that mm -hmm. is of learning. Mm -hmm. And if I can teach something that is positive to someone, I feel it is worth coming. Mm -hmm. I put, I take the elements apart and put them back together. So therefore. I take your elements apart and put them back together in a way that you can understand them. So if there's questions, I can take those elements and make them understandable. You see, where there is un where there is no information, then I can connect and make them into information. Is there Brian? questions out there? Brian? Brian? Yes, yes. Hello, my friend. This is Brian. Hello, Brian. Hello. Um, could you describe a little bit about who you are and how you are connected with Grukfuk Nier or any of the others? I, Grukfuk Nier. Ah, it's a, a, a many-part question. and I have to take all the elements together, but <laughs> I could take many time, much time telling you the answer to this, but I will make it as short as possible. I am an Octorian. I am um, on the ship. It has a name. You gave it a name. Well, that people. Of course, that's human. Is yes. The mothership it is the mothership. Yes, but it is oh. not Grukfiknerian. The Grukfiknerian alliance is within themselves of five species. I myself am an ally, but not an part of the alliance. We have some differing understandings of how ascension should happen. And yes. so therefore, we believe that it should happen exponentially, of course. But I believe that their interaction with the weather can be a little non-beneficial. Let me explain. I think that the weather should be as it is, and I don't think the timeline will not exist. I think that it will continue to exist, but there would be a lot more fatalities. However, that's the way it was meant to be. Right. However, my purpose on the ship is to bring enlightenment, to bring peace and harmony to those that want to have it, to those that are reaching for it. I will help supply it in one way or another. I am also beneficial for the people in my ship. I am sharing leadership 
Although I am the leader, I share leadership with many. But they report to me in the sense that not to, to write anything, not to bring me anything, but just to communicate <clears throat> right, right. what it is that we all should know. My question is, are because your alliance, you're kind of separate in a way, do you have the capability to bring humans to your ships? We have that capability, but we see where you are in this particular realm and time period, and it is not appropriate for us to do so. Okay. We have the Could you give a projection? Rule. Yes. <clears throat> Could you give a projection on how far in the future of our timeline that that may be possible? A probability. There are different speculations about this because of things that happen. Let me give you an understanding of this. One moment. There was some communication I had to relay. But yes, there is different speculations on the time that you will be able to come site to site. And the reason is different things can happen in the meantime before those speculative times. Now there's five speculative times and depending on the actions that come between that we will know which one will happen. But they will be within a period of two to four years. That soon? Wow. I kept, I kept thinking that it would be a good 15, 20 years. It cannot wait that long. That's what I was hoping for. I'm, I'm glad that it's not going to take forever. <laughs> we're very, as species, as humans, we're very impatient at times. <laughs> <laughs> but we, I love your energy, my friend. It's a very uplifting frequency. Much love to you. Much love to you. You see, it must happen sooner than 10 to 15 or 20 years. The reason why it must happen sooner is for the sake of ascension. The sake of ascension is so important. Yes. It, it takes so long for all the things of ascension to become awakened. Yes. There is not just one or two things that are part of ascension. It is many, many things that tele telepathy gives and takes and becomes. And it takes many, many of your earth years for it to become what it should be. So it's more of the DNA activating within us. It is more the DNA activating, but it is more... Also, the fourth dimensional energy not just being in the brain, not just being in the body, but being in the spirit. Yes, yes. It's almost like the spiritual, the manifested spiritual is kind of integrating with the physical more. Exactly. Ah, now I understand. It brings the spirit to the surface. Yes. It brings the spirit to a new place. I wouldn't call it the surface. Okay. But a new place, a new understanding, yes. and a new a powerful energy. It's a very the balanced spirit, energy. Yes. The spirit, you, everyone always says, oh, it's love and light and all these wonderful very light things, but the spirit is also many other things with depth and I with feel. sensibility and yes. will change the way you think, will change the way you perceive, will change the way you go about your third dimension without moving into a fourth dimension, 
will change your perception of third dimension. Right. I start to see a balance that comes with this, a great balance where the spirit's more at the forefront, then people realize they start to see the God within each other. I like the way you said that. Mm -hmm. Yes. We drag your the spirit along behind us sometimes. <laughs> it has the to be at the spirit. forefront of the balance. There you do not you do not want to let your spirit move behind you, but come forth and move ahead of you yes. and bring you along. Not push you. Right, push and pull. And that is the way spirit works on your planet sometimes. It <laughs> pushes you into things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but now it will lead you into yes. things. It leads you into the moment when people get yes. into the, vulner the vulnerability where the control ah. of the soul essence comes out. Do you see? The nows, the nows, the nows, yes. Yes. The they moment. are part of the now which just barely is in the future. Ah. They are in the future. Your spirit is actually in the future. I figured that. Yes. Your spirit is in the future. Let it lead you to where it wants to go and not where you want to go. Because it has a purpose that builds Might the I purpose speak? within you. You are purpose. But let's look at that in the eyes of the spirit. It looks different. It looks different because it is the future different. Whereas you live in the now different. Yes, much love, my friend. I, I'll let another speak. Thank you. Ah, it is so fun to talk to you because you understand. And it, uh, it, it was just as you were saying, uh, to let the spirit lead. I often often think of the spirit also as the soul as well. Yeah. Um, and the way I see it is, the soul knows best. And it will often, as you say, push you and lead you into various things. And, you know, in my opinion, that should, you know, it's, it's a bit of a balance sort of thing, as, as, as it was said. Yes. It does not always lead with love, though. That is a no, fallacy. No. That sometimes people think. Mm -hmm. It leads with purpose that is yes. connected to love. It is connected with love. It's connected with positive, but it does not always push forward that way. It may not be observed as being a loving action, but it is a necessary action because the, the soul knows its place in time, space, and responsibility. It is as I always tell people, my friend. The soul always remembers life is not a process of discovery. Life is a process of creation. Ah! <laughs> it is well said because there is much truth there. Your creativity is there for a purpose. It is not just to hang around and make you feel good about yourself. It is not just there for to show somebody, look what I did. No. It reaches beyond that. It connects yes. with the world. Mm, yes. Everyone yes. should be connected with the world. And that is where the, the soul relates because the soul already remembers everything there is to remember. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
behind the chakras, all the information of all your past lives, all the information of all your past lives behind your chakras. One chakra, if one chakra was more po prominent in one life, then that one is will carry that life. And if another chakra was more prominent, it will carry that life. You understand those can be brought out of you to help you in your present life, but not necessarily. Mm. Not necessarily going to happen. Mm, indeed. But if you would like that kind of help, you can find it. <laughs> indeed. Of course, of course. I'm kind of hearing you saying um, to have us let go of the free will just a little bit more and so that we can be guided by spirit. Well, you have to understand exactly what free will is. You can't let it go if you don't know what it is. Free will is everything that you are, really. It's even squeezing a pimple on your forehead. You can choose to squeeze it or you can choose not to. I'm not a big decision. However, it can be. What if it gets infected? Because you squeezed it. That's a different thing. A different outcome than just letting it heal on its own. And it would have gone away and you wouldn't have an infection and you wouldn't have to deal with it. So your free will interfered with the perfect mm. healing process. Mm -hmm. That is just a small example of what free will is. Do you understand mm. that? Now free will is everything you do, taste, touch, do, want, experience, because you have free will to have a hamburger for lunch or a drink of water or a salad or a hundred different things. And you say, well, that's not important. But it is. Your health is important. So that hamburger might not be good for you, but the salad might be better. And that affects free will. Every small little detail of your life is free will. Everything. Everything you do. Do you think God sits up there and says, oh, let's see, for lunch today you're going to have this. No. God does not sit up there and say, oh, I think you should travel over here. No. You are the one that decides all these different things within you. Yes. So in order to understand free will is to, to understand that if you give it up, you don't do anything. So do not give up your free will, but let the Spirit speak to it. That's what I say, the Spirit is in the future just a tiny bit and knows what you should do, but do not also listen to spirit. How can you listen to spirit 100% of the time? It is not something that you do. Because you are in third dimension, you are not in spirit. However, there are moments that are critical to your forward motion. And that's when you should listen to the spirit. You should stop before you move forward sometimes. The future can be dangerous even if it's a second ahead. You might walk into a door or wreck your car or do something unusual within the next second. Crucial things happen in the next second that they, the spirit is ahead of. Have you ever avoided something that seemed very dangerous just by that one second ahead? Yeah. Many times. Do you think that's an accident? No. <laughs> Spirit sees that second ahead and pulls you 
into now. May I uh, just mention something? I first I want to say thank you so much for coming through. You are a blessed being, and we love you very much. And I would like to know if succinctly on this topic, would you call this uh, the power being in the present and the use of personal responsibility and personal growth? Would you really repeat that, dear? I, I did not quite understand that. Certainly. Goodbye. Yes. Um, I'm wondering if you would reference what you're discussing right now as being something called personal responsibility. Oh, it is part of it, yes. Very much a part of personal responsibility because you are making the decisions for yourself. And if you let, if you bring spirit into the part of that decision, then that is part, you are working together. Yes. You can work apart or you can work together. Yes. Spirit does not work separately from you unless it is to save you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I understand. Thank you very much. Yes, I understand your question very good. Yes, because the responsibility for each of us mm -hmm. lies on each of us. Mm -hmm. We cannot say, I am sorry, but it's your fault that I did this. It is not possible for them to reach into you and make you do something that you cannot do. If it is within you to do it, and you have done it. It is your responsibility to say that you have done it. Now, you can say that you were influenced by something else, but still that influence is not to blame necessarily. It's how you accepted the influence. It's your responsibility. If you accepted that influence as an influence in you, then you are still responsible. If it resonated with you to do such a thing, then you have done it. Yes, yes. It's almost like it always comes back to self. It's your, the most powerful place to be is always in the moment, it seems like. Thank you. Because you're you're taking command of who you are. Should yes. Go? Thank you for calling me here today. Can I ask another question? Certainly. Different topic in your natural form. What dimension? We are fourth. What? Yes, we're four. Well. Everyone has a different understanding of what dimensions are. Yes, it's a density. It's a, some people call it fifth, some people call it fourth, some people call it sixth. The thing is, it, we all need to get on the same page about that. We all need to get on the same thought pattern about what the densities are. Everybody calls them different things. And with... With one person, I'm in the fifth dimension. With another person, I'm in the fourth dimension. With another person, I'm in the eighth dimension, you know. But it, the, the thing is, it's not really that important what dimension I'm in. What is important is the, the message that comes across can be related to in the third dimension. So what my lightness or density is, poof, it, does, it won't make any difference to you if I, I'm a, a wisp of air or a solid monster that has three eyes. It doesn't matter. What does matter is the truth, the lightness, the love, the information. Those are the things that matter. The growth of your species 
into a new evolution of understanding. That is what's important. The natural form <laughs> is... Actually, I, if I explained what I look like, um, oh, I'm sort of orangey. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not real tall. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are some portions of our species that have small little horns, but the, uh, not uh, I don't have don't have those. But <laughs> I'm female, so some of the males used to have small little horns in the past, but not anymore. Um, I'm bipedal, pedal, pedal, whatever word you want to use, pedal, 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 blah, 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 blah. not sure, but um, I, I'm not real pretty in your eyes, but I'm pretty mm -hmm. to those that think I'm pretty. Well, you have a pretty voice. <laughs> I have a pretty voice. Oh, what about you. your your facial features? Like I have a big mouth. <laughs> so in so many ways. But just a little <laughs> bit of Octorian humor there. But I have I do have a rather large mouth, yes. And um our eyes are smaller because we do have come from a bright, um, uh, there's much light on our planet, so the eyes do not need to be as large. They take in a, a much light, and so our eyes are smaller than, say, those of Yu Yil, who have large eyes because they're from a dim planet, or yours from, you have moderate size eyes from a moderately sized sun, so the sun has a lot to do with how big your eyes are. So, of course. Makes sense, doesn't it? Yes. Um, just, just, that's all there is to it. And um, we do not have a nose to speak of. There is one little hole, but it is protected. If we want to smell someone or something, we have to actually get close to it. The olfactory portion of our um, what do you call it? Evolution. Because there is no unclean chemicals in the air for such a long time, it was not necessary for us to be able to smell poison or whatever on our planets because the air is so clear and clean. However, that's a bad thing whenever you go off world because uh, the air is not so clear and clean and you have to use sensors and make it clean sensors and technology to clean the air in front of you so that you can move. See, actually when we don't have helmets or things, we actually have a system that cleans the air directly in front of you and keeps it constantly clean. So therefore we don't have to have all, any kind of other technology other than the air cleansing that comes with us moving to other worlds or whatever. If, if we can actually be in contact with it. So the, we can cleanse the air very easily with our little devices. But that is why we have no nose to speak of. With the, is it, not the gray, but is it the look, look kind of like a gray where you have a well, it's upside a, down triangle? Yes, it's, short, yeah, and yes, that's very, that's very good. You don't really walk, just kind of a floating feeling. It's it's bipedal though. Yeah. Yes, we can float sometimes. Um, it's more of an orangey gray. Yeah. Yeah. Orangey. I, I the structure itself. Yeah, the structure itself is sort of yeah. unusual. Yes, you would say upside down triangle maybe, but um, yes, but we do have two. We have legs and feet as well. Mm -hmm. So. But you don't need your body. I mean, I um, don't know. We, don't, your body. we don't. We it, don't. Yes, we need it, but we. I understand what you're saying. Yes. Mm -hmm. We do. We can move in other ways. Yes. yes. We do need it, though, for some things. Yes. If you're connected to Giuliano, are you uh, now speaking uh, as a feminine versus a male? Or? Yes. Okay. 
Saint Juliano? Uh, if he wants to come. Just wondering. Um, he doesn't really want to come, but um, he said you're doing fine as you are. So he said maybe next time. Thank you. But yes, I'm Juliana. <laughs> We are not. So is it only Arcturians? So oh, one at a time. <laughs> Sorry. Is it is it only uh, Arcturians or is it? Uh, well, I would say that the, on my ship, on this ship, there it is ninety percent Arcturians. There are some a couple other species that we have with us, uh, uh, pets. There are a few pets uh, from other species, and there are a couple other travelers with us. We're taking them to their homeland. It's we were we're being used as a transport for a couple other different species, but they are not part of the ship membership. But they are they are friends. It's a large ship, I'm assuming. Yes, it is a very large. Sure. Yes, very. Like a Yes. Do you spend most of the time there? Do you actually go back to the planet? Where you well, you, we can transport back and forth. Yes. yes. I can go back to planet. Um, we just call it planet. We can go back to planet and visit family or friends or whatever. Um, yes, we often do. We often have our times where we need our, our uh, freedom and space as well. I mean, there is work and there is density and there is dimension and there is planet and there is family and we are we are part of it all yes in ah oh what what is um uh, about um human years human years uh, uh, close to a hundred that's it that's it oh. yes hmm. we live a long time but i'm only about a hundred Giuliano is as well or hundred couldn't He's a little older, yes. He's a little older by at least fifty years <laughs> and your time. <laughs> That's it? Well we'll see. I, I have to figure it out. Maybe I'm incorrect. Yeah. What was the in, question in, here? Yes, in terms of uh, this is Sabrina. Um Sabrina. in terms of <laughs> In terms of Earth Ascension, how how are you helping us? Well, here I am. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I sort of asked the obvious. Um. Um, no, but there is other ways. You are correct. I understand your question. We are working with other different... We work with Crook Fickner, and we counsel those people that do this sort of thing and we counsel those that are interactive with the earth and so sometimes we give them advice that we feel is pertinent because we feel sometimes they overstep their boundaries okay and in terms of that um, there's there seem to have been sent uh, a wave of negative energy recently. Oh yes, I saw that. Actually, it's happened many times in the past year for your your higher dimensional people, higher fourth dimensional activation people. There's been a wave here and there of very negative energy causing great emotional stress at times. Some of you know how to fight it off and others of you do not. Um, you see, the way to fight it off is to pretty much ignore it at first. <laughs> uh, but it's hard to do because it is so strong. This last wave that hit the East Coast was very strong. And some people were left in a de in unable, what's the word? Disabled. Yes. Physically or emotionally? So emotionally. 
and which cause physical as well. So but some people that have reached beyond the fourth dimension into some fifth dimensional realms were sort of protected because the fifth dimension couldn't be touched, but the fourth dimension could, and so could the third, of course. So. So how do we protect ourselves if we don't know that that's what's happening? Um, well, we're trying to protect you. You cannot protect yourself, really. Uh, we have to protect you on this level. When it's that high, there's not much you can do to protect yourself. We must help you protect you. And we send, we send as much energy right afterwards as possible for those to recover quickly. But it is not much you can do, really. It's my understanding that yeah, you're because not so it was much involved with the Pleiadians and all that are fighting. You know the. No, 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 no. Your job is the the ascension of yes. the uh, consciousness and the corridors. And the corridors yes, and, and we take care of stargates and portals and sort of and that sort of thing. Yes, we have people on Earth that do that for us as well. We do have messages through different species that give people the awareness of where portals are and to activate them or charge them or do different things of that nature. Fighting. But not the fighting. You know, we do not do any of the fighting. That is not something that rev resonates with us yeah. at all. We do not resonate with conflict of that nature. We do resonate with conflict of the spirit and the body and things of that nature because it is a growth process. Some conflicts can be growth process oriented. However, conflict of a warlike nature is not growth process oriented at all. Just the opposite, in fact, most of the cases. But the wars are being fought now yes. between the Dracos and all that wonderful stuff in the uh, solar system. There are many things, many, uh, there are many, many wars in many different dimensions. It's amazing to. I'm sure it's amazing to you in third dimension that there are wars in other dimensions. But it is because you, each of us, every single spark soul is different and has a different purpose. And if that purpose goes astray, it can, it can be fighting with itself, which causes it to start fighting with others, which causes others to fight back because it causes the conflict. It's, it's, it's just like a, the ascension. It's a wave of uplifting. There can be a wave of down. If you so, connect uh, with, if you can connect with the, the wave, it some it can affect you. So, but your decisions, your responsibility, is to try to avoid that, of course. But it's not always easy. It is so not always just because possible. you're in a higher dimension, it doesn't mean that that there are no wars. If if there was nothing negative in any other dimensions, being in another dimension would have no meaning. Do all Let universes me that. have that? Of course, you must be able to appreciate what life, otherwise it becomes meaningless. May I speak? Sure. Um, from what I've learned and from what I'm continuing to learn, there can be no light without a dark. And there can be no dark true. without light. Yes. And it is something I have always aspired to follow. See, I, I walk a very, very middle path, if you will. Um, I seek to bring balance in accepting both points of view, because really there are both points of view in yes. each and everything that we go through. Yes. Like, just as I've said about the soul, it's not all love and light. It's not all positive energy. There's part of it that the only way it can exist has a t some dark energy in it. So it's what all do about being shown the what universe we together. Dark energy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Dark energy see, holds the universe yeah. together. Absolutely, and see, and 
what I've been taught is, you know, and I, like I said, most of the information I've been taught is from, I consider it from source itself, but of course there are many forms of source. Um, yes. But what I have been taught is that, you know, there is what is called the realm of the relative, the realm where there is good, there is evil, there is love, there is fear, and all of these things. And I believe that goes for all sorts of the, the dimensions. Is that correct? Yes. For it, for the, it to exist, there ha, it has to be polarized in some way to hold it together. Does that make sense to you? Indeed. Indeed, yes. Then we don't exist anymore? Is that what you're saying? You exist only in. Only in, no. You exist. That's enough. That's enough. Okay. So when we're at the all, there is no more of the duality. There is. It's, it's a place where you are totally at peace, but you don't have to stay there. But you go there to be totally at peace. And when you leave there, you take that essence with you and it's like radiation. It, it slowly dissipates throughout the universe. Do you understand that? Absolutely. She asks, if you were at source, would you cease to exist? And the answer is no. At source, you become who you are fully in source. You become totally at rest and at peace, but you do not have to stay there. You can move away, and as you move away, your, that peace slowly moves out through the universe with you. It dissipates like radiation from you, but it does not mean that you're not still at peace. <laughs> you can go back into duality, yes. So can can the soul feel all the different energies, uh, um, um, emotions, um, like we do? I yes, of course. So it's capable of, of feeling hatred also. Of course, because it has to understand what it creates and what is created by the things that it creates. It has to understand that. So it, yes, of course, it has to feel everything and know everything that it is to know so that it can understand what it has created when it, and what it, its creations have created. Because his creations or her creations or its creations, however you want to say sources, um, has created other things that were not created by source, but were given the capability to be created by source. Juliana, if we wish to receive energy from you and from the Arcturian Collective, what would be the best way of doing this or going about this? Speak Arcturian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, you're finishing each other's sentences now. <laughs> it's, it's a wonderful thing. But anyway, yes, no, actually, just call upon us. Just call Juliana. I have a <laughs> sensor on the earth. We all do. There are so many sensors on the earth right now, you would think that you would be feel like you're being probed constantly. But <laughs> it does not work that way, I guess. <laughs> um, not that kind of probe here. But, um, I know, I know. <laughs> but the thing is, there's, there are many probes coming to the earth and you cannot s feel them or sense them, but your governments know that they are there. And they are constantly coming and they, it makes them a little bit edgy. But they're learning to live with it. Are you working with any of the um, the leaders, whether it's Russia, America, in the I, you, you and Giuliano specifically, and who would that, what country would that be? Or we are not working specifically with one entity on Earth, with one particular okay. 
area of the earth, mm -hmm. but we do pop in and send messages to certain people at times. Mm -hmm. And the messages that we send are very peaceful, mm -hmm. but very informative in the sense that um, we'll tell them that they what they should not do sometimes and why, but it's up to them to understand why we sent it. So you stay in the background more, much like Putin would be given information from other groups of aliens. Um, you know, yes. So you're more the background. You really have well, to well, the outer reaches. It's hard for me to answer that question because yes and no. We are in the background, yes. We're not in the background, yes. Um, um, but I can't elaborate on that without giving away some things that you are not to be known at this time because we promised that we would not elaborate on certain things. So we are in the foreground, yes, and we are in the background, yes. Is there a great influence with you with JFK? JFK. Oh. Um, he was taken for a reason, yes. No, I mean during his his uh, presence it was communication. We we communicated with almost every president. Okay, not more so. We could have communicated with some more than others. Okay. I can give you that. Did Jesus have Arcturian in him? <laughs> I think I understood that question correctly. Um, he has a little bit of everything in him at this point. Who's that? Jesus oh. has a little bit of everything in him at this time. When he was on your earth, he had not a little bit of everything in him at that time, but he had more source in him than normal, which gave him a little bit of everything. Let's put it that way. Juliana, this is Rowie. I have a question. Uh, since the Arturian race has been around for such a long time, what would be yours or maybe give an example of your favorite or most cherished moment of the creation of humanity on earth my favorite moment that is a hard one because there are many favorite moments I have many favorite moments I have many favorite moments um, to see the enlightenment the first enlightened human was one of my greatest moments because they took things to a different level and people respected that and they begin to understand that beating people over the head and killing animals for just sport was not necessarily something that they wanted to do and the reasons why and and um, brought that slight spark of evolution to their people around them. Another part of you, the things that I really enjoyed about Earth was seeing it in its very early foliage stages where there was very little there but some growth and plants and the air was thin and and there was there was just a sea of molecules and protozoa and it was very inspiring. It was like watching a moving painting. Do you understand that? It was like watching a moving painting. The different colors were, would mesh and move and be malleable and ah. It just was a wonderful thing. I wanted to get, I wanted to just jump in. But of course that was not possible. Oh, many blessings for sharing that. That was, that was beautiful. Thank you. Sharon? Yes. 
Carol, do you want to ask a question? <clears throat> I will. Thank you, Sabrina. Hello, Juliana. I call my name Sharon. I call myself Sharon. <laughs> Hi. Yes, all right. And I, I understand that uh, you said that you can help with energy, realigning energies. And I was explaining yeah. this earlier that I'm feeling really chaotic today. I have a lot of decisions coming up, and I'm sure that everybody has their own. Um, I was hoping you could send out or send out some energy for realignment ah, let, or inspiration. Let, oh, let me tell you this, dear. I can take. You see, confusion is chaos. The same as chaos is confusion. Confusion and chaos are very similar. Chaos is actually more, a little more dense and uh, moves a little faster. However, in the mind, chaos, uh, confusion is moving back and forth between different things and different understandings. Let me tell you how to do that. You take these different things and you write them down. They're all separated. Separate them. Separate them. Separate them. Separate all those thoughts. Put them on a piece of paper, whatever you want, on a piece of computer, whatever it is that you do. Separate all those thoughts. And then you can see them. And you know what? You've taken chaos and you've put it in a straight line. And now when you look at the straight line, you can do a resonation on each one of them. Each one of those separate thoughts has its own resonation. Ah, you do not look happy with that. But the understanding is not all resonations that are unhappy are the wrong resonations. But you will resonate what they are. You will resonate if they are the right choice, even if you do not like it. And I see that there is a choice that you really do not like, but you think that you are going to have to take. Is that not right? There's a choice. Yes. There's a resonation that is like, oh, what is the word? Shit. Shit. Oh, is that the word? Um, oh, boy. <laughs> I, I understand the word has many meanings, so yes, okay. But anyway, oh, manure, yes, or dung heap, or whatever it is, it's, um, it may not be pleasant, it may not be pleasant, but the outcome eventually will be for the right, the good, the, the thing that will be what you are shooting for what you are wanting to go. Sometimes to get to the other side of the lake, you have to swim it. Or you can get a boat. If you know how to build a boat. <laughs> <laughs> you either build a boat and go across it, or you swim it, or you walk across if it's shallow. But sometimes going across looks daunting. Looks like not the kind of thing that you want to do right now. Fearful. But yet over there, there's the coconut trees and the pineapples and everything that, you, that will help be helpful. Do you understand? Yes, thank you so much. I love you very much and I understand what you're going through. The choices, but do me a favor and do separate those choices. And look at them singularly, because right now they're just jumbled up together. They're like you they're separate, but they're still connected. You have to separate them. Prioritize. Prioritize. Is that the word? Yes. Yes. All right. I must go now. It was interesting to be with you. I enjoyed it. 
Ah, did someone else have something to say? Yes, I had something. Hello. Yes? Hi. First off, I wanted to send uh, my love uh, to you. And Thank you. I had a question. Um, what world? What? What? Did that what? come through? Um, it did not come again. through. Your My voice God. ceased and then started. My question is, what are the females like on your world? Um, well, understanding who you are, which I do, we would probably be cumbersome mates. We are not, we would not fit together well. Uh, you would probably have to turn me in my head. We are of a triangular shape, but the greater part of the triangle is on top. So it's, I'm trying to send you a little bit of an image. Um, yes. But, yes, you are definitely much more well-formed in some ways. Are you slender? Not really. The top part is not slender. The bottom part is more slender. It's interesting. We keep a lot of biological things on the top part so it's safe. We can control how that is mo moved. But on the bottom part, we're not so much safe because if we float at times and move, we do not always use the legs. So they're not as strong as yours. I would love to see an Arcturian. <laughs> yes, well, <laughs> perhaps for you it would be comic relief and others very frightening. No. No. Well, of course, well, well, I will say this for, you know, I'm totally blind, so really it, it wouldn't really matter to me, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you see in your spirit form, you may be able to see because... The spirit is pretty, sometimes perfect. Unless there's a reason for you to to not be able to see in spirit, you should be able to. Well, see, I was in this life. I was born with a disease called septo-optic dysplasia. In the physical body is where the optic nerve is not entirely as developed as it should be. Ah. It's and crazy. so, ah. yes, yes. And so that's why I am... Uh, totally blind in this life. So yes, the spiritual eyes are indeed enhanced, as well as Very the hearing good. and the sense of smell and taste and whatnot. Ooh, that's an interesting thing. I could have a very interesting conversation about all the other senses with you. But and <laughs> <laughs> indeed. <laughs> indeed. Could, could he see in in the astral if he went... That is what I'm saying. There is a possibility that that is a correction that would be made by the astral body. Since that is something of a human defect. Yes, yes it is. Um, I w it's, it's just the only problem is I have a hard time astral projecting consciously but learning in the process of doing it's it. It's all so. right. Your time will come. Your time will come. I have no question of that. I feel that your other senses have been amplified. Is that a good word? Amplified. Yes. yes. And that your sense of understanding, even your brain amplification, has been quite unique. Yes, it is. Very. Yes. Your uniqueness in brain function is lovely. I love it. It is actually advanced. So that is a nice thing. Yes. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, all of my life, this life, 
Uh, well, of course, my human mother's always told me I've had a photographic memory, but I never really took much heed into it. I just it, it came very, very natural to me, and uh, you know, I never quite I, I I never boast about anything about myself. So so, but uh, but but yes, um, I've yeah. done a lot of things that have had to do with the brain. You know, uh, worked with computers all my all my life. This life, worked with everything. So yes, anyway. <laughs> Yes, I see that work ha that has been done. Also, that there has been some things that have been enhanced because others have helped you a little bit. But that is a wonderful thing. I love that. Yes, indeed. Very good. Uh, I must go now. Yes. I said that All right. already before. Thank but you for I coming. Didn't say. Um. You are very welcome. I am. I'm having a good time, but I need to go run the ship. So okay, uh, <laughs> they're calling me back, saying you said you were coming back. Where are you? Ha ha ha. So um, do you know Tatuli? Thank you. What? Do you what know that? Uta, Do you know Uta Tuli? Yes. Oh, can you say hello to her for me? Wait one moment. Tita kata ta. Ha ho tu ti ti. It has been done. Thank you. And have a wonderful day. What a. Yes. Much love. Much love. Blessings, Juliana. Thank you so much. That Thank was you. Such a wonderful experience and much awaited. Thank you. Thank you, Juliana. Connections. Connections. Yes. Also connections. Do we have a freeze going on for Jim? Yes. Just a camera freeze? Let me refresh. Oh, there he goes. Perfect. Hello. Hi. So, come on. Hi, Jim. Uh, where's my drink? Oh, there it is. Oh, gotta have it. Well, that was cool. That was really good. Thank you for asking about the Stargates at Jim's place. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh, you're welcome. Did I ask about the Stargates? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. You answer about the Stargates. <laughs> Yeah, I have some, but I not 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 until you remind me. I don't remember everything, so some parts of it I'm here, some parts of it I shift different places. So uh, that last person, I was shifting all over the place. So. Oh really? That was an Arcturian. Yeah, she was. She was so cool, though. Very cool. She was like playing ping pong, ping pong with my brain sometimes. <laughs> I, was, I was over here, I was over there, I was over here. I was over there. So. <laughs> oh goodness! I think your brain's a bit bigger than that, Jim. Oh yes! Oh well, yeah! <laughs> okay, volleyball. <laughs> no, it's not that big. <laughs> uh, um, but anyway, she was uh, she was quite interesting. But because when she shifted, which she did a lot. She shifted into different uh, areas of her consciousness, and she took me along with her to that area. That's what I mean. It was like there was a lot of shifts because one shift she would be real deep, and then one shift she'd be very light, and then one shift she'd be like philosophical or something. And then I was moving all over. It was a little bit like a roller coaster ride. Like Arcturians are tracking. Yeah. yeah, and so yeah, because like she, 
literally took me to that place in her brain where she was thinking. Does that make sense to you? Wow. Don't you just wish so, you could have a psychic oh. camera? Don't you just wish you could have a psychic camera and exactly what yeah, you do I would, when, when you... I would start. like someone to do some kind of energy reading while I'm doing this sometime. It would be a very interesting to see what the with the changes are in my brain because there are definitely changes in my brain for sure. So, well, sure, I can I'm honestly sure say this. Uh -huh. uh, I, I I can. Oh, you're gone. Uh. Okay, so what I'm getting is that somebody watching has the skill set and the knowledge to draw her, if that's what. Oh right. Yeah. Somebody can draw her, yeah. Um, now, Thomas, you cut out right in the oh. middle of what you were saying, so could you try that again? Sorry about that. But as you were channeling, I could mm -hmm. kind of see that, yeah, like you were saying, you were there, but yet you weren't there at the same time. And it was like as you were channeling, it's like I felt like this big surge of energy that come from you as you were yeah. doing it, and, and it was just like, whoa. <laughs> So yeah. Yeah, that was her for sure. Yeah. Um, I, um, I, I, I just feel felt like. Go ahead. Oh, you well, just disappeared again. Uh, I'm 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 here. I'm sorry. It cuts in and out. The internet where I'm where I'm here, it kind of cuts out in and out sometimes. Okay. But anyway, um, I feel energy. Very very easily, so so that that so that's that's so that, that's why I I sort of noticed it. Anyway, go ahead. Okay. Oh, you felt a large surge of it though. That was cool. Um. Yeah, she had some really interesting things to say that I was like going, huh? Um. In my brain, I was hearing some things and that I didn't quite understand. But she might have been saying more different things to me than she was saying to you. So. But I didn't quite understand everything she was talking about. Uh, at least uh, what she was telling me was some other stuff. I think. So. Yeah, there were there were a couple of things that I'm going to have to go back in. There's a couple of phrases that she said that need some analyzing. All right. Yeah, I. She was way. She was trying to be very third dimensional in all her actions, thoughts, and patterns, but yet her thoughts were going crazy fourth dimensional and fifth dimensional and sixth yeah, dimensional. Yeah, yeah. They were going crazy nuts all over the place up there trying to bring it to a third dimensional level. So um, what I got was a lot of very quick interactions in her synapses and thoughts, if, you, if that makes sense mm -hmm. to you. Like she was translating really fast and and then after she translated it, she translated it again into a third dimension that we're in. Not just the well, words, but our emotional states. Did, so did she you did see more than one kind of translation. She did like several translations as it came through. Does that make she, sense to you? Yes, yes. Did you see sort of like a stepping and stepping and stepping? Like sort of but like she did electricity. It like immediately. <laughs> um, so you get a visual of her? Yes. Yeah. What was that? Did you get a visual of her? Because she was just Yeah, she herself. has a uh, um I could not really describe her. I did get a visual. She does have something that looks like hair, but I don't not sure it's it's heavier than hair because it moves. It moves in a way that, like, uh, like it, you, like a pigtail would move. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it moves like a heavy string, but you can see that there's several of them. But she doesn't move her head a lot. But when they, when she does move her head, these heavy strings move. Now, whether that's part of her or not, I'm not sure. It's <laughs> like a dreadlock. Did you see? Did you see ears on her? Like. They're yeah, they're very very small. Is she wearing something? A uh, like a uniform? She had a head. She had something on her head. Mm -hmm. She had things on her head, 
more than one thing. It it, it was actually pr quite pretty. The thing that she had on her head, it had several different lights and um, and they were different colors. And I I feel the stickiness on my forehead of the bandage that I wear at night. I I wear a bandage over my eye. Um, I took a shower too. But anyway, uh, <laughs> no, thank you. For, you're all welcome. I know you can't smell me out there, but <laughs> yes, she did have clothing on of some sort. Yes, she was wearing something uh, very shiny. It was green. It was, um, but it had it did have a pattern on it of some sort. Yeah, it was. Uh, it came out from here. There was a pattern that came out from the sides because they're they have a really broad shoulders. Yeah. Really, really broad shoulders. Uh, but the uniform had something that came in from the sides, like a, not a V necessarily, but it stopped. It stopped about here, mm -hmm. but it's, it started coming in. So anyway. Um, and Very the height, cool. Yeah. The height was quite quite small. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And their height is they're not very big creatures. Yes, yeah, they're only like what four, four or five feet tall. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's four, the image. Maybe even it. shorter. Beans. I Beans. the way I looked at them, it, it could be smaller. It could be smaller. It was like I was looking down. I couldn't really tell, but they were small. Yeah, they were very small. <laughs> their legs are very thin. Yes. But I only got a glimpse of her in the full. I saw more of her. I just saw more up here. Yeah, she wasn't thin up here. No, not at all. She's very broad up here. So, she's a broad broad. Yes. <laughs> but, um, well, that's the other thing is she wanted that. She consciously was thinking that. Humor is a helpful teaching tool, and that is why she interjected it. Is because she sees that when people are learning the most, they're enjoying themselves, and so she wanted uh -huh. to interject some humor in there so that you would enjoy yourself and be much more in tune to her because she might say something else that would make you laugh or whatever. So. She interjected humor for as a learning tool. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah. So that is really wild because I could. So she funny. purposely and did the humor. And she could apply it really well because you know, just because you know, you know, we use humor for that doesn't mean you can apply it in a right. way that well, we will she, get it. Yeah, but she's she good. Did it. Yeah, she did it very well. Timing is everything <laughs> when it comes to humor. Well, yeah, really. She was... That was a very unique experience. But as a whole, they are not humorous toward each other. It's a very somber, very, yeah. you know, telepathy. That's right, exactly. Totally out of her norm, isn't it? Yeah. But that's why she had to interpret so many times. Yeah. She had to come down through, do translation after translation, but she did it so fast. But it was giving me like I was going over here and I was going over there. So she's translating here, translating there. Blah, 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 blah. She did several different kinds of translation all at once, and I was that's why I felt like a ping pong ball because it was all not in one side of the brain. It was moving throughout her brain. It was like I was like traveling around. I just needed a little car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> a little golf cart. Yeah, a little golf cart. Okay, there you go. <laughs> But Jan, it was very, very yes. Oh, sorry. Very, uh, may very I ask, easy. whenever uh, she, or whenever she's like talking to another person, and yes. when she has some insight about them, do you get to witness that as well? Yes, but I don't remember it necessarily. But I witness it with her. Yes. Oh, that is so I, neat. <clears throat> and I always wondered how they access that. I mean, I understand it's all energy that can tap into it, but what? Why did she uh, did she access you somehow? Oh, I I don't know. She just she just understood that I had decisions, but um, or that I yeah. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not sure if she accessed you or not, but she understood your your emotion that you were feeling. Yes, yes, that's what I meant. How do they tap into that? When I mean they, I mean anybody who you channel. Or she, they're a higher, they're the, a lighter form of dimension, and they can actually be telepathic with you without you being telepathic with them necessarily. They can just sort of be with you. Does that make sense? They sort of just come to you and feel what you're feeling, and then they feel yes. what you're feeling, and then they move away. So, yes. so, so without coming into you necessarily, they can resonate what you how you feel how you're resonating and things like that. So, yeah, because um, yeah, she was a different kind of channel than I have ever done before. That was a different right. that was a different kind of channel that I've ever done before, really. So. But uh, did so she give a lot of good pen information? And paper, huh? If you had a pen and paper, would you be able to draw some stuff? Um, uh, me? Some, some, um, well, I'm a... <laughs> yeah, I'm a terrible artist. But, um, yeah, I know, I uh, know. I'm also a terrible amazing. artist. But, you know, some. Now, you my mother was the artist. You underestimating yourselves. <laughs> because if you can get visions, I, I, well, I didn't hear that. Um, I somebody out there can draw her. I'm sure though. They she gave somebody an image. Uh, but my yeah, mother was, was the artist amazing. in the family. Pegasus is an amazing artist. I would love to see. Uh, yeah. Have that ability to draw what some of the things we're seeing. I'm sure Robert would wow, be crazy. amazing at that. Well, yeah, I can draw, but I didn't quite get the image. She, if uh, if she's in touch with you, she'll give it to you. So, she'll yeah. Give it. Give it. Well, I feel it, but I can't quite see it. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't strong enough then. So. Let, let her draw through you. Yeah, just let her draw you. Her through you. That's what he said. That'd be cool. So. Just anyway, keep, um, just keep going at it. Just, just keep yeah. at it, Robert. And I'm sure you, you'll get it really soon. And um, you'll be richer than all of us if you get that right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Did she give good information, though? It felt like yes. it was real strong. It felt it like was, she was pretty yeah. strong on information. Yeah, she was very good. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, I just want to open. Open up the mic to JD or Adriana since they're new. If anything you okay. want to or anything you want to say. Hello, everybody. Hi. Uh, I think I had a question, but I don't know if it's if it's time to ask it now. But it was a question about uh, food, uh, about free will and eating. Okay. Um, and my question is, let me see if I can get this straight, but free will is that we uh, we can eat whatever we want and uh, uh, that would uh, have con consequences, so to speak. Like she said, uh, Juliana, or I don't know who it was, she said that it's your choice if you want to eat a hamburger uh, or if you want to eat a salad. And um, it was uh, some thought that I, yeah, it was this, um, so the intention, it's sort of like uh, this uh, plasma effect, or how do you call it, if you eat a pill, and this pill is basically just a sugar pill, but you can actually get healthy from placebo. thinking, yeah, placebo effect, yeah. so my question basically was, that can, can you be eating whatever you want? Okay, you uh, disappear there. Sort of. Eating whatever yeah, uh, you want. What? Uh, if you can eat uh, whatever you want and uh, get out positive effects from it anyway, from the free will of thinking yeah. that you eat a hamburger and you have a free will thinking that this hamburger is uh, is good for me and it's going to yeah, do me like, well. Of course. Everybody's system is different. Every everybody in the earth is different. We all have our own uniqueness 
mentally, physically, emotionally. So you can actually resonate with something that might not be good for someone else and be perfectly fine for you. And um, also, also, um, oh, I'm sorry if you wanted to. Say that. Also, if you wanted to put more energy into your food, you can just put your hands over it. And because you have chakras in your hands, in the palms of your hands, and you can make that food even more nutritious by adding your energy to it. And then it becomes a uh, part of you already. So May I add a little practice that, that I do before I eat? Yeah. Um, um, being aware of mostly that the food contains a lot of water as well and water retains thoughts and memory. Um, I always thank the food that's going into my body. I always thank that it will be part of me and will be make up the best of me. Um, I always just do this in my head and and just just before I it's this I think it's the beginning of what people used to do as a prayer before food and it's become the prayer, yeah. you know, it's down and I like that. Yeah. But it's just a yeah. mental little thing I always do with my food. And whatever I eat I usually don't have a problem with it anymore, but before I used to. But now I do this, do this little pra practice, and it's, it's really beneficial. I recommend it. Wonderful. I, I like that. That's great. So. Very good. Um, you can even do it with alcohol if you want to. Yeah, you can <laughs> do it with anything, really. So. Alrighty, I think is it, if there's nothing else, I think we should probably look for our closing prayer. Yes. 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 And um, thank you very, Sabrina. Anybody else? I am ready and able. Very Same. good. Um, Brian, would you like to do some? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll point you in another language, though. All right. Let's uh, ahead, start Brian. our closing prayer. Anybody here want to do a closing prayer within the room here? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, I, I can, I can possibly do one. I don't know which language. Sabrina, do you want to start, or oh, do you want me to? Do you want to start, Thomas, and then after you, we'll have Brian, Thomas, and then after Brian. you, we'll have Sabrina. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Sure. By all means. Excellent. Thank you. Wonderful. Did you get the interpretation? No, I did, but they said if you if you got it, they want you to say it. Okay, that's fine. Uh, it's well, I'm getting it as well, and it's saying. Well, part of it I got from the intention of it was, uh, may you be blessed in light, may you go in peace, may all be before you, and may you call forth the best in your reality. That's best. That, that's that's the, the sort of what I've got. And let your there's another little part to it you didn't say, and that's let all your natures come together and become as a world is a community. Yes. So, there you go. Brian? Iya kana ni shakata ha ni yakata hoa. Iya shani kana ni sakata tu shu tu tu ni yakata tu tu wa. Iya sho tu Ni kaka i tata so no choto, tu kutu no wata, i ya ushkudu wata da, i ya so kutu huwa, i saka ni yakachitu duwa, ya saka nani katoshkudu duwa da, 
いやそこのうわだいやかいうしょううしょののはいいかられやうしとは Wow Wow <laughs> That was really beautiful. That was something personal for me. Thank you very much. And、um, really, very, very emotionally touching. Whenever you're ready, Sabrina. I think I'm just going to leave that one for. Yes, yes. Go. I'm glad. Takatana na ki yo soko li a kati yo koso. Oliana ki yo koloko. Ah, sani yo koloa. Ti yo kaliaka. No saki yo tuku a ki. Yo ni ki yo salia. O sani yo kotu kali. Kiki, si aliaka, anaka, ki o kotu kotu kotu, e ki o kotu nanaka, ki o ko, o la niaka, a ki o kananana, ki o ko, si ki aliaka tata na liyo, o na aliaka ta, to kotu ko si aka yo, to ni si ki e ti o sa, no ki ala so kotu. オラミキアト、そのなことをしやき、あたかそことわらき、エンティーヤサノアカ、トノアティアカ、トノアサナ、ティユーサカティアニアキ、トノコタキヨコスワティ、カマカタカ、カリコシアカ、ニオリアキヨコトオノアカティ、タキオのソワキ、タリエノアカタキオト、タシアカタティア、ノーラニアカ、トコタリアマノコトコトコ、コナソコリスワラナ、タノアシアキアタキ、コノコスカティアキアキアキアノ、トサカナキアキ、トナナナナカタ、トカリアタノノソワリエニオサラニオコトサニアカタアロソトオノリアオノアカティオソオロノアカタティユソコトアカタ Words can be as light as helium Or as heavy as condensed stars. So can love and many other emotions affect you in such ways that can be light or heavy. Let me tell you that we are looking for those things in you that will bring you into lightness, that will bring a lightness to your world that is like nothing that you have experienced before. We would love for you to feel. Only for even a moment, the great lightness that the densities hold for you, the evolution holds for you in these coming years. The lightness of your hearts and souls will be that that you cannot understand between yourselves. And now you are moving in a way. And let us help us, no, let us help you to move in a way that is consistent with the ascension and the bringing together of a community that will someday change the universe. Very nice, Sabrina. Thank you, Jim, for that translation. That was wonderful. Thank you,、uh, Jim. Oh.、Uh, that was very emotional. 
So I'd just like to say a big thank you for everybody tuning in, watching today's webinar. Hope you've enjoyed the last two hours. It's been really magical for us. If you'd like to get involved, obviously you can get in touch through the website, www.humancolony.org. Um, also, you can find us on Facebook and Google Plus and all the other places. Thank so you. I'd just like to thank Thomas, Sharon, Sabrina, Nitrous Pegasus, JD, Jim, Hyan, Brian, and Adriana for such a wonderful webinar today. Thank you all for bringing and shedding your light upon the world. And also, sorry, we got my partner, Kim. <laughs> and, um, and also Barbara and Helga yes. and Sandy and Will. They're uh, all great energy here, wonderful yes. energy. Yes. Thank, thank you all. Happy week. Happy weekend. Thank you much. Happy weekend. Bye -bye. And, pl and please oh, remember don't forget to donate um, because it, it helps Jim and helps the website. Um, so whatever it is that you can do, even if it's you know two dollars, it's appreciated. So <laughs> don't think that it has to be a large quantity. It's just whatever your heart and and you can afford, you know, feels yeah. is the right thing. Thank you. I mean, none of us get paid from any of this. Um, all the funds go directly to the website and to Jim himself, who has given his pretty much his time to provide these services for everybody. So if you are touched by them, if they help you, like Sabrina says, please follow the link on the website and donate anything from a few dollars to a few thousand whatever you can afford, because I know there's loads of people with loads of money yeah. out there. <laughs> Will said, don't limit it. <laughs> exactly. But that was funny. Maybe 2,000 was a bit of a limitation? 200? Is that yeah. <laughs> but also I wanted to just reiterate the, uh, that Bart, Rob Gothier is going to be here on the 16th of May. Uh, He's a great, really loving person. He's done so much for me. You have no idea. He's given me sound advice and helped me along with my all the things that I am doing. He's he believes in human colony. He's really very, um, very much. Him and his wife Kalina are very, just wonderful. So uh, they've been very good, and, and I want to have him on the show. He's had me on his show, and so um, I think that he will be a wonderful, wonderful guest on May 16th and also our event on May uh, June 20th and um, I have to say that, that many are looking uh, forward to that yeah. Close Encounters of the Eighth Kind look it up um, Rob's, um, Rob's website is Treb Channeling is that correct? What is it? Is it Treb Channeling? Um, it's uh, ev um, Enlightenment Evolution Network and it will be Ardiff channeling this time he said ah okay I was just trying to get a reference to Rob's website so if people did want to get yes, in the with Rob as well uh, uh, Enlightenment uh, Evolution Network yeah Enlightenment uh, Evolution Network I'll also do a bit of research and get those uh, details for next week the, um, if you look on there on his site the event is on there as online events so and then you can check out Krista Riza and Rob Gothier and my video isn't on there yet because I'm technically a little retarded but um, oh, well, but that's no, that's there a, too. if anybody out there would like to help Jim um, create a video so if you've got the talent you've got the skills and you want to contribute maybe you can't contribute financially but if you can contribute with your efforts and your skills well, that is worth um, more than money believe me so yeah. please, Get in contact with either me, Sabrina, or Jim, and we can um, get you sorted out and help Jim out a little bit too. Well, Will is going to help me with that, and Safira has sent some information to to me as well. So thank you for both for doing that. More help is welcome. More help is welcome, of course. Is that a video? Well, I'm, I'm looking at the videos that they have put on there and how it's done and. We're, I'm going to try to get something similar. Jim's video is going to be like a like a music video. 
<laughs> he's going to wear a pink suit too, and he's going to do some ballet. Guaranteed. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everybody, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. I love you all very much. And bye um, bye. bye bye, and uh, take care. I, I'll thank see you, you soon. Thank you, Jim. Thank you for everything. Bye. Thank you, Jim. Bye to everyone. This is with Jim. All right. Bye. Bye bye. Much bye -bye love. Bye bye now. See you. Bye bye now. Stick around for the after party. Yep, there's always an after party. <laughs>